Welcome to the Dungeon Coach. I'm the Dungeon Coach. This video is going over the most popular sentient items in movies and media. And I got a challenge for you. If at any point in this video I give you a sense of nostalgia towards your childhood, click that like button. And share this video with a friend of yours that likes movies. Because this is more than just Dungeons and Dragons. This is some cool stuff that everybody can talk about. Some of the coolest things on this list came from people that have never played D&D. All I asked them was this. Okay, so you know the magic carpet from Aladdin, right? Yeah? Well, what are other items like that in movies? Oh, so like Cappy from Mario Odyssey? Not really a movie, but that works. <laughs> Legit, that took me half an hour to do. You'll be surprised what they come up with. I also posted this on Reddit, and it kind of blew up more than any videos I've made. This video is going to be fun examples of those items and how you can maybe use them in your game. I took all my favorite comments and ideas from talking with people and put them into these different categories right here. And if I miss one of your favorites, comment down below for that follow-up video. In the category of objects, here's what a lot of people said. All the toys from Toy Story. The Brave Little Toaster. The Knight at the Museum's exhibits that come to life at night. The Sorcerer's Apprentice in Fantasia with all the brooms and stuff. And all the furniture and stuff in Beauty and the Beast before they turn back into people. But time out. Are these really sentient items? Just Around from Reddit says, I'd argue that the characters in Beauty and the Beast are cursed humans, not sentient items. And there was a whole debate that ensued after that. My thoughts? I love that blurred line between the curse on a person that turns them into an item, but now they're a sentient item? A lot of times an item is something that you'd wear or use, but in the case of the magic carpet, you don't wear the carpet. And these things in Beauty and the Beast you don't wear, but they are helpful. What do you think? I totally agree that it's a curse put on those people, but I'd say it turns them into sentient items. And how cool would it be to use this as inspiration for some mansion in your campaign? Or maybe they're all just mimics. I asked a lot of my students these questions, and apparently there's been a ton in Harry Potter that I never realized. All those paintings in the hallway that talk to you, the, I think they're called bludgeoning balls, bludger, bludger balls, bludger balls, and the golden snitch seem to all have a mind of their own in that sport. Tom Riddle's diary was a sentient diary. And of course the sorting hat, putting students into different houses and showing up for some clutch saves. Put a sport in your world with sentient items or give the main villain of your campaign an evil book. I'm sure it's way more intimidating than that sounds. The next one's companions, which I guess the magic carpet would fall into the category of. Going from cleanest to dirtiest, we'd have Olaf from Frozen, Pinocchio from Pinocchio, Ted from Ted, and Towley from South Park. Just great examples. Instead of throwing a DMPC at your players, because we all know how that goes, throw one of these companions at them. This category is also interesting, AI. In order to take a piece of technology from our world and bring it to D&D, you gotta be able to explain it through magic. Artificial intelligence, robots, droids, all of that would be sentient items. Or are they? One of the most notorious on this list is Hal from the 2001 Space Odyssey. Sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. I didn't know these two, but there's TARDIS from Doctor Who and Kit from Knight Rider. And you also got Herbie the Love Bug. And all of these fit in the category of like a vehicle, so you could have a sentient stagecoach in your game. These next two are AI, but they're also companions. The Iron Giant from Iron Giant and Baymax from Big Hero 6. But are these really sentient items? Another example I'll say now from later in the video are Transformers. Are those sentient items or an actual race of beings? Baymax and Olaf were both created by their master, but the Transformers are an actual race, but they were created by somebody too, but so were we. Whoa. Moving on, let's bring in some stuff from Marvel to help this out. Now, of course, you got Doctor Strange's cape, which is a great example of a sentient item. But what about Iron Man? Here's a Reddit post from Great Nebula. There's also Jarvis, before he turns into Vision, Friday, and Karen that could count as sentient armors. Now, I'd say Iron Man's suit with those talking voices is for sure a sentient item. And if Jarvis is a sentient item, then does that mean Vision is an ascended sentient item? Could you make a playable character race a sentient item? That'd be so awesome to put an entire suit of sentient armor in your game. And all of these thoughts bring me to the most controversial part of the video. Time out. Now I want everybody to keep in mind, this is a creative collaborative process. So be nice to each other down in the comments. I will take down anything that goes too far or isn't respectful. Because by all means, you can disagree with each other, but do it respectfully. I want to create a community here that shares ideas with each other. and doesn't just hate on people because they don't think the same way or agree themselves. I love me some nerd debates and I have them all the time, but it's okay if we don't agree. All of us will have some line that we draw of what we consider sentient item or not. And that's fine. The purpose here isn't to win and convince everyone you're right. It's to get creative and leave this conversation with more than you had. My stance is I usually tend to lean towards the side of creativity. If something's close enough to being a sentient item to give you some inspiration to put into your game, go for it. 
That Baymax and Olaf example, you could have functions similar to a find familiar spell or an unseen servant. Whew, here we go. Questionable races. All the Transformers, Groot from Guardians of the Galaxy, and the droids from Star Wars. Are these sentient? Of course they are, so are humans. When one of my friends said Groot for this, I wanted to shoot it down as just a race of plant people, but I can see where that gray area is when you compare them to something like Transformers. This whole robot thing really gets me thinking, because I feel like C-3PO and R2-D2 are more sentient item companions than like the droid army is, but they were both created. And back to the Iron Man example, we can all agree that Jarvis, Friday, and Karen would be sentient items, but what about when they go in automatic pilot mode and all the suits are flying around by themselves? Those are all acting on their own, so are those sentient items? But they're being controlled by Jarvis, who is a sentient item. Now my favorite example of these gray areas is on the opposite side of the spectrum. We're talking about robots, but what about organic life forms? The Venom suit from Spider-Man. Here's some of the favorite points made in those comments. And the coolest part here is I can see the side to both arguments. First on RT did not think that Venom would be categorized as a sentient item, and he made a really good point. Doctor Strange's robe is not special because it has thoughts, it's special because other robes don't. So sentient items are sentient items because their equivalent doesn't have thought. The Churrigan, the Churrigan, the Churrigan's biggest distinction for this was that it needed to be an equipable item. Whether or not it was organic or not was less relevant to him, and it's more about the purpose. But then what about the magic carpet? You don't equip that. And he made another great point, bringing up some D&D material. Inclusion of the symbiote is particularly relevant given Eberron has them as magic items. And I find myself lining up with Hickory Bane's comment. From a practical standpoint, they function as a suit for the human. And if they were in the game, they'd have the same blurry line as a sentient item between equipment and NPC. I'm all for symbiote rights, but they definitely fit the description I'm looking for. Well said. Another person I asked about this whole Venom thing saw Venom as more of a curse on the player. An organic living creature that lived inside of them. There's so many great comments that there's no way I could list them all. And I see both sides. And that's what I'm talking about. What this conversation really makes me want to do is make an entire race of cool sentient creatures, whether it's golems made from the elements or scraps of metal from Mechagon. And I for sure want to put an item or creature, whatever you want to call it, in my game that takes over the player's body and lives inside of them as some sort of cursed sentient item. And I can't forget Speed Chuck's comment. The symbiote is just a mimic. A closed mimic. After I read that, Venom's mouth really does look like a mimic. Now on a similar but lighter note, here's some examples that fit the possession mechanic of Venom, but are definitely items. The Millennium Puzzle from Yu-Gi-Oh! and The Mask from The Mask. I love both of those examples. This fits the full spectrum of an evil Venom type possession. The Yu-Gi-Oh! Puzzle Box is more of a good influence, and The Mask is a crazy person in the middle. Now this last one might be the biggest one of all. The One Ring from Lord of the Rings. I never even realized that this was a sentient item. L. Wells' comment, the One Ring from Lord of the Rings is a more subtle example of a sentient item that doesn't speak, at least not in a typical sense. It was an extension of Sauron's will. What a great example of one sentient item being the focal point of the story. Creativity goes to the ocean from Moana. As soon as I read this, I had to stop and think, but I totally see it. An entire ocean of a sentient item. Now myself as a DM, I see the ocean as more of a deity or a god. This just made me think about a sentient vase of water that when that water touches other water, it gets more powerful. And my favorite example that sent me straight back to my childhood was B Premium, the White Ranger's talking dagger. Yes, Saba. Once Tommy the Green Ranger became the White Ranger, he received a sentient saber-tooth sword. I literally had this sword growing up and I went and looked for it and I couldn't find it. But a sentient item that summons other robots which would also be sentient items to form together into one big zord that's another sentient item. <sighs> okay. And my honorable mention that's for sure not a sentient item, except maybe for the main character, is Wilson. But just thinking about this item in D&D makes you want to have some crazy old man meet the party and then give them an item and tell them it's a sentient item. But it's not. I don't think I could keep a straight face when one of the players starts talking to it for the first time. And that's it. I hope you had fun with this video because I know I sure did. So please, if I made you smile or got you thinking, hit that like button, think about subscribing, share this video with somebody else you think might have fun, and join in in the comment section down below. Because honestly, right now, YouTube thinks I suck. And those four ways are the only way to make it think otherwise. There's nothing else I can do but try and give you guys the best videos I possibly can. I really do appreciate the time you guys spend with me here. So until next time, stay creative and think outside that box. Peace!
Okay, so you know. Okay, so you know how. Okay, so you know the magic carpet. Mm 